This is a second video on logarithmic functions. In this video, we're going to go ahead and focus on evaluating logarithms. So it's still kind of a basic um, cornerstone of logarithms, I guess you could say. And uh, the prerequisites here are going to be that you need to know everything about exponential functions. Um, not necessarily how to graph them, although you should already have done that, but everything else about exponential functions is very important. And then you should know what a logarithm is, you should know its basic use, and sh you should also know how to transform between logarithmic form and exponential form. If you don't know that, please go back one video uh, to see my basic concepts and uses. Briefly recall that a logarithm is just an exponent, really. The log base b of x is equal to y if and only if b to the y is equal to x. I call that my circular argument. So uh, if this is too fast for you, like I said, you need to review my uh, video on uh, the, base, the concepts and basic uses of logarithms. But essentially, log base b of x equals y is the same thing as saying b raised to the y power is equal to x. So let's start using this to evaluate logarithms. Now, when somebody hands you a logarithm to evaluate, it's usually not in an equation. So I'm going to delineate kind of what they gave me from what I'm going to be writing use by writing in black ink for the stuff I'm adding to their problem. So if somebody comes up and says, what's the log base 3 of 81? I usually do this. Well, I don't know. That equals some number. But then... I can use the circular argument now that I've written as written this as an equation where I say well it equals some unknown I can then use the circular argument 3 to some power so that remember this is the raised to is equal to the inside so this means that 3 raised to the x power must equal 81 now we're, remember what we're trying to find here we're trying to find the value of x well, 3 to what power is equal to 81? If you're saying the fourth, you're absolutely right. 3 to the fourth power is equal to 81. And there's a couple ways you could do this. You can either just recognize that 3 to the fourth power is 81, or you could say 81, well, this is the same thing as recognizing that 81 is 3 to the fourth. I'm just saying 81, and another way to write that is 3 raised to the fourth power. Since these bases are the same, and these exponential expressions are equivalent, that means their exponents are the same. So I know now that log base 3 of 81 must equal 4. Now it's very long-winded with that, and the reason why is because I want to kind of show you every little step. But really, when I look at this, and I always write the equals x there, I just say 3 to what power is 81, and I start thinking. By the way, I just kind of noticed some handwriting issues. Um, some people might be wondering what that was. This is a caret symbol. It means raised to on a computer. So I, that's, that's the raised to symbol I use. All right, let's try another example. Now I have log base 5 of 1 over 625. Again, this is what they handed me. I'm going to put in here equals x because it just makes it a little bit easier for me to see when I use a circular argument. 5 raised to what power is going to equal that inside? So let's write that out. 5 raised to what power is equal to 1 over 625? Well, you really try to write, what you should do is try to write that 625 in terms of a power of 5. Turns out 625 is 5 to the fourth power. Now notice the left hand side and the right hand side are not exactly the same. The bases are not exactly the same. So I'm going to manipulate the right hand side. I'm going to attach a negative to the exponent so I can flip that upstairs. So I have 5 to the x on the left hand side. On the right hand side I'll have 5 to the negative fourth. Notice their bases are the same, so their exponents must be the same. That implies x must equal 
a negative 4. If you have a hard time with that negative exponent flipping to the top and bottom business, you should go back uh, probably about 20 or 30 videos of mine uh, to find ones where I, I talk about negative exponents. It's a super important topic and it's an assumed prerequisite. All right, so this means that the log base 5 of 1 over 625 is going to equal a negative 4. And you can check it out. 5 to the negative fourth power. That should equal actually 1 over something because the negative power on there means flip that 5 down to the bottom. So it does work out. Now this one is one of my favorite examples just because it's a great introduction to a theorem that we can use in the future. But it's a really nice problem to illustrate what this means. So log base 11 of the square root of 11. And I wrote in the equals x because they didn't, it just helps me out so I can say, well then 11 to what power is equal to the square root of 11? That's my question to myself. 11 to what power is equal to the square root of 11? One thing I can do is change the square root to an exponent right? The square root of 11 is the same thing as 11 to the 1 half power. And now you see it. The base is the same, so the powers must be, be equal. So it means x is equal to 1 half. So what we're really saying is 11 to the 1 half power is equal to the square root of 11. And that's absolutely true. We all know that at this point. So let's go ahead and write that down. Log base 11 of the square root of 11 is equal to 1 half. What I don't like to see as an instructor, and maybe your instructor is different, I do not like you to see, I do not like you to do the following. Where you solve this all out, you get x equals 1 half, and you just walk away from it. Because I, it doesn't demonstrate to me that you know what that 1 half is. What that 1 half is, is it is equal to the log base 11 of the square root of 11. So please just rewrite this log base 11 of the square root of 11 equals 1 half. And as I just mentioned, it brings up um, a good indicator of a theorem here. If I would have written this in exponent form first, so if I was looking at log base 11 of 11 to the 1 half power, if somebody were to ask me, what's log base 11 of 11 to the 1 half power? That's essentially them saying, what do I raise 11 to to get to 11 to the 1 half power? Uh, 11 to the 1 half would be 11 to the 1 half. So what's interesting about this is that if I had said log base, oh, I don't know, b of b to the 10th power, well, what do you think that's going to be? b to what power is equal to b to the 10th power? The answer is in the question. 10. b to the 10th power is b to the 10th power. So this is one of the theorems that is uh, involved in logarithms. Let's go ahead and write a few of them down. Given that b is not equal to 1 and b is positive, and we'll talk about why that's true in a while, but given that b is not equal to 1 and b is positive, well, log base b of b to the p power. Well, let's ask ourselves again. I just did this problem, actually, but I had a 10 in the place of p. So let me ask you, b to what power is going to equal b to the p power? The answer is p. b to the p is equal to b to the p. So, this theorem says log base b of b to the p power, always just going to return p. So this is always going to turn into p. And as a kind of a sub note here, log base b of b, what do you think this is going to turn into? b to what power is equal to b? Well, b to the first power. So those two I consider to be the most elementary of the theorems for logarithms. There is one other one that's, that's pretty neat and interesting, I guess. Log base b of 1. This is the only one that actually really involves a number inside there. b to what power is equal to 1? Well, let's see. You have b 
to some power and you know it's equal to 1, that power has to be 0. b to the 0th power is always equal to 1. So this must be 0. All right, so let me erase that out because I think I'll reuse this page in the future, that is. So these three theorems are what we're going to use for the next few problems. So continuing on with our evaluations, then we're at example D here, let's figure out what log base 8 of 1 is. I don't need a theorem really to tell me what this is because I know 8 to what power is equal to 1? Well, 8 to the 0th power is equal to 1. Right? Circular argument, 8 raised to the 0 is equal to 1. So that was a pretty fast problem. And, and those three first three theorems really are meant for the fast problems. How about the log base 1.12 of 1.12? Now, I, I like this problem because it demonstrates that logarithms do not have to have just pretty looking bases. They can have decimal bases or fractional bases as well. So 1.12 to what power is equal to 1.12? 1.12 to the first power is equal to 1.12. So that's, again, using the circular argument. Okay. So there we go. Now let's make it fun. And I highly encourage you to pause these videos. Every time you see an example, pause it, try to figure it out. This example is called a nested set of logarithms and you follow the order of operations always so you look inside the innermost parentheses here the innermost parentheses actually is going to be this 81 right and you can't really simplify 81 so now you focus on the next set of parentheses innermost parentheses so this group right here and i know what the log base 3 of 81 is actually uh let me write it up above log base 3 of 81 is just some number. Well, 3 to what power is 81? Well, 3 to the fourth power. 3 to the fourth power is 81. So I know that this is just going to equal the log base 2 of the log base 2 of, and then instead of log base 3 of 81, I'll replace it with 4. Again, follow the order of operations I look on this innermost parenthesis here there's nothing to simplify so I go ahead and focus in on the next set of innermost parentheses log base 2 of 4 and again I'll just as an aside log base 2 of 4 well let's see 2 to what power is equal to 4 2 to the second power is equal to 4 so this parenthesis or this highlighted section right here should just turn into the number two. So this is going to be log base two of and then two. Now I know two to what power is two? Well, this is just one. Two to the first power is two. There we go. And also, by the way, I am using this previous theorem here to do. You could use this previous theorem. Log base two of two would be one. Or you could just use a little bit of logic. I like the logic part of it. Now it turns out certain bases are more popular to use with logarithms than others. If you had to use log base 3, log base 7, log base 24, log base 1.12 all the time, your calculator would need a button for each of those bases. Well, I mean, if there was no way to convert. But let's just pretend your calculator would need a button for all those bases. If you look at your calculator, though, you likely, well, maybe I'll bring up mine, you likely only have a single button for the logarithm. It just says LOG, and it doesn't give you a base on it. A lot of students might think, well, what would I do with that? What, do I just tell it what the base is? And the answer is no, actually. It turns out that log base 10 is such a common base for a logarithm, the 10 bases, that they often just rewrite it as log of x. So if you see somebody write something as log of x, or log of 10, or log of 28, or log of 357, and there's no base written down, it, it's implying that the base is 10. 
Okay, it's like the lazy man's base, but the best type of base to use actually. Log base 10 is a really good base to use. And so common that we call it the common logarithm. All the rules still hold for the common logarithm. So all these theorems that we talked about right here hold if this is just a 10 down here. So log base 10 of 10 to the p power, it's just p. Log base 10 of 10, 1. Log base 10 of 1, 0. So continuing on with our evaluation set of examples here, let's look at what log of 100,000 is. This you could do by hand. You just have to rewrite this a little bit. Oops, I was supposed to be writing this in black because this is what I'm adding on. Log of 10 to the something power. What is 100,000? Well, let's see, count up to zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's 10 to the fifth power. Now remember, if I haven't written a base, you can assume that it's log base 10. That's log base 10 of 10 to the fifth power, which will turn into 5 because 10 to the fifth is 10 to the fifth. Get it? Let's try another one. Let's try, I'll just make this one up, log of 0 0.0001. Again, I know that the silent base means it's a log base 10. And I would really like to write this as a power of 10 if I can. If I can't, then I, then I will not. But as I see it right now, this is a power of 10. It's 10 to the negative some odd power. So let's see. Um, that's 10 to the negative fourth, right? You can check that, by the way. 10 to the negative fourth is just 0.1234. Yeah, so that is 10 to the negative fourth. So I have log base 10 of 10 to the negative fourth. This will turn into a negative 4. Now, it's not always going to be the case that somebody hands you a log base 10 of a nice pretty number like this. These are both powers of 10. The question is, what happens if you don't have a log base 10 of a number that's a power of 10? For example, this. This is the more common case, that you have log of 22.1, which again is just log base 10. You don't have to write it in there. I'm just kind of showing you that it is log base 10 of 22.1. And so now the only way to find out what this value is, because 22.1 is not a nice power of 10, what you're going to need to do is grab a calculator. And it does tell you in the problem to grab a calculator and round to the nearest thousandth anyway. So let me go ahead and do that. On a calculator, you just hit the log button. It automatically knows you, need, you mean base 10 and type in 22.1. You don't really have to end parentheses, but I do. That's 1.344, roughly. And if you're using uh, some type of, if you don't have a calculator with you, you can always use the internet. Using the internet, and uh, I guess I didn't need to leave the calculator up, but I did. You can just type in log of 22.1 and hit enter and it gives you Google as a calculator so you can it knows you mean log base 10 and of course there are other websites you can use as a calculator as well um, I'll let you explore through those so again let's try just one last one log of 0 0.012001 so again I'm, I know this log base 10 I'm not going to bother doing that so it's just going to be log of point o one two o one and parentheses if you want to and hit enter and again I want to round this to the nearest thousandth so this is roughly going to be equal to oops change colors there roughly going to be equal to a negative one point uh, nine two one that's rounded to the nearest thousandth make sure you use the approximately equal to notation on both these because it's not equal to, it's only approximately equal to.